This is the first lesson of P3, or Forces for Transport. This particular module is very mathematical and will deal with a lot of the physics about how we analyse the movement and motion of objects. At the start of the module we're going to look at speed and then acceleration and how we can represent those graphically and then move on further to forces and then start to look more about cars and the motion of vehicles and that will include how they crash and how, what safety features they have in, when you're in the car and then finally we'll end considering some other examples of motion, for example skydiving and how roller coasters work. So one of the most important equations about motion is what we're going to start with which is how speed works. Now if you imagine driving in your car you'll be familiar with miles per hour. Now if you think about that for a second we've got miles per hour. Miles is a distance. Per means divided by, an hour is a unit of time, and that is how we define speed. It is how much of a distance we cover in a certain period of time. Now when we talk about physics, we don't tend to use miles per hour very regularly. What we tend to use is we tend to use standard units. So for distance, we always use metres, and for time, we always use seconds. So this is the basic equation for speed. Speed which has got units of metres per second, just like miles per hour, is distance divided by time. Okay, so speed is distance divided by time. And we can represent that equation with these two triangles. Now these triangles you need to be familiar with. If we look carefully at how we are given this equation, we can see that we've got one quantity divided by another, so distance divided by time. The way we convert that into a triangle is we always put the quantity on top of the division on top of our triangle. So we have speed is distance divided by time. If we got an equation that was multiplied, for example Newton's second law, force is mass times acceleration, then the multiplication always goes across the bottom, but we'll get to that later. So this equation can be represented as speed is distance divided by time. Now this triangle is useful because it allows us to rearrange the equation easily. So if I want to calculate speed, I cover speed on my triangle, and this line here represents division. So it's distance divided by time. If I want to work out the distance of an object, and I know it's speed and time, I cover distance, the triangle tells me it's speed multiplied by time. If I want to work out the time of an object, and I know it's speed and distance, I cover time, and then my triangle shows me distance divided by speed. This is the same triangle, but just represented with symbols as opposed to words. This is a shorthand way of writing it, and you'll become familiar with this shortly. So let's have a look at an example that we might be familiar with. This is the fastest man alive, Usain Bolt. He currently holds the world record for the 100 metres. He covered that distance in a time of 9.58 seconds. So we need to actually work out what that actually means in terms of his speed. So the way we do that is we follow our four steps for maths questions. And if you haven't watched the video on that, I strongly recommend you do so before continuing with this module. So we know the distance is 100 metres. The time is 9.58 seconds. And we want to calculate the speed. So that is our first step done for us. The second step in answering that question is we write out our equation. So we turn, look for our equations we're given, we find the one that contains speed, and we write it down. So speed is equal to distance divided by time. Step number three is we put the numbers that we've extracted from the question into our equation. So speed is equal to distance, which is 100 metres divided by time, which is 9.58 seconds. And the final thing we do is we put it into a calculator and work it out, which will give us a speed of 10.4 meters per second. You must always remember to put the units at the end of your answer, otherwise it doesn't mean anything. Always, when you put this for an examiner on your exam paper, if it isn't, doesn't give you a box to write it, always underline it to make it really clear to an examiner that that is your final answer. Let's consider another example. This time, 
we have a car driving 1.5 kilometers in one minute. So the first thing we do is extract the information from the question. So our distance is 1.5 kilometers. Our time is one minute. And our speed is what we're going to calculate. Now, this time we have one slight problem that you need to be aware of. We are given a distance in kilometres and a time in minutes. And we've already said it has to be in metres and it has to be in seconds. So if I want to convert kilometres to metres, there's a way I can remember how to do it. I know that if I have one kilometre, that is equal to 1,000 metres. Now, if we look at what we've done to that number, to go from 1 to 1,000, I've multiplied that by 1,000. And to go in the opposite direction, I've divided it by 1,000. So if you get given a number in kilometres, to go from kilometres to metres, I multiply by 1,000. So 1 kilometre, if I times that by 1,000, will give me... 1,000 metres, and in the example we've got, we have 1.5 kilometres. So 1.5 kilometres times 1,000 will give me 1,500 metres. In one minute, there are 60 seconds. So we're going to do a similar thing to go from minutes to seconds, we multiply by 60. So 1 times 60 will give me 60 seconds. So we now have our distance in metres and our time in seconds. So now we carry on exactly the same. So step number two is we write our equation again. Speed is distance divided by time. Step number three is we put our numbers in. So our distance is 1,500. And our time is 60 seconds. And we put that into our calculator and work out the answer, which for this particular question is 25 metres per second. Let's have a look at one final problem. This question is going to require us to rearrange the equation, and we'll look at several methods of doing that. So the first thing we do is we need to extract the information from the question. So this time we have a bird flying at 14 metres per second. Metres per second is the unit for speed, so we've got a speed. So speed is 14 metres per second, and it's flying for 1.5 hours. Hours is a unit of time, so we've got 1.5 hours, and in this question, we're going to calculate the distance that this bird has travelled. Now, we need first to make sure that all of our units are correct. So metres per second is correct for speed, but we can't use a time in hours, so we've got to convert that to seconds. So there are 60 seconds in a minute, and there are 60 uh, minutes in an hour. So first we need to turn that into minutes. So the way we do that is 1.5 times 60 will give us 90 minutes in total. And then we do the same, multiply by 60 again, but this time our 90 minutes, and we will get 5,400 seconds as our time. So step number two is to put the equation. Now we know that we're using an equation for speed, so speed is equal to distance divided by time. But this time, this equation is organised so that we can calculate speed, and we need to calculate the distance, so we have to rearrange it. Now there are two ways of doing that. The first way is by cancelling out time on this side of the equation. So if I multiply both sides of the equation by time, what I'll then get is speed multiplied by time is equal to distance divided by time multiplied by time. What that allows me to do is then to cancel out time on this side of the equation because t over t cancels out and that will leave me with speed times time is equal to distance. Now if you don't feel confident rearranging equations like that then you can use the triangle method. So the triangles we've already seen you need to remember that whenever you've got divided by, you put the number on top of the division at the top of your triangle. So our triangle will have speed 
distance at the top and time at the bottom. So if I want to calculate the distance, we cover the distance and we can see that it's speed multiplied by time. So we get to the same equation but using two different methods. And you should use whichever one you feel more comfortable with. The final step is to put the numbers in. So step number three is 14 meters per second multiplied by 5,400 seconds will give me a distance of 75,600 meters. And that's the distance the bird has traveled. It's important to remember that the units are now different because we've calculated a distance as opposed to a speed or a time. If you don't understand any of the points we've just covered, either watch the video back, discuss it with your teacher, or look carefully at the revision notes.